Um, so I'm going to talk about the ongoing um, trials that are that a lot have been talked about already. So I'll be hopefully able to go through that uh, relatively quickly. So the learning objective is to review currently open PARP inhibitor trials, and I'm going to really focus on uh, either single agent PARP inhibitor studies or PARP inhibitor or studies that combine PARP inhibitors with biologic agents, um, and then how to select patients for appropriate studies. Um, that are, that are really best for them. Those are my disclosures. Um, this is a review. You've heard about the different PARP inhibitors, Olaparib, Viliparib, Rucaparib, Niraparib, and Telazoparib, um, or we could sell VMN 673, um, which is not in any um, uh, registration type of trials, uh, but has, is, is open in for some, uh, at least one trial for ovarian cancer. So I'm going to run through a lists of trials and, and basically update you where where they are, um, what their origins are, and and talk about trial design eligibility. So for uh, there are several now single agent trials for recurrent ovarian cancer. So I'm going to talk about single agent studies for recurrent cancer and single agent studies for newly diagnosed ovarian cancer. So this slide talks about um, recurrent cancer. So Olaparib is in solo two. I'm going to make the use of this little green arrow. Um, you've already heard about that. This is study 19, um, except larger and solely in patients with germline uh, BRCA mutation. So this is a, a Laprib versus placebo study, two to one randomization in patients who've just completed platinum-based chemotherapy um, for recurrent platinum-sensitive ovarian cancer. Um, and that has uh, completed accrual and certainly await the results of this. SOLO3 is, is just starting up. It's a phase three trial solely in germline BRCA ovarian cancer. And all of the phase three studies for uh, Olaparib are all in germline uh, BRCA ovarian cancer. This is Olaparib versus single agent chemotherapy, the physician's choice in patients with platinum sensitive relapsed uh, BRCA ovarian cancer. Um, and then there's a, a, another phase three study that's just opening up, just got placed on clinicaltrials.gov, um, which looks at patients who have non-BRCA uh, but do have mutations within other genes that are involved in DNA repair. So this is Olaparib versus placebo as maintenance for patients with platinum-sensitive recurrent ovarian cancer. And this cancer has to harbor a somatic BRCA or deleterious mutation in non-BRCA homologous recombination repair associated genes, so PAL-BC, pal uh, uh, PAL-B, RAD51, um, other genes that are involved in DNA repair. Um, Niraparib, uh, you already heard from Tom Herzog, the NOVA study, and also Brad uh, mentioned this phase three study of Niraparib versus placebo as maintenance in both BRCA or non-BRCA high-grade serous ovarian cancer. So this is uh, SOLO2, except now also incorporating patients who do not have uh, germline BRCA mutation but have, are, are wild type, but have high-grade serous ovarian cancer, again, platinum-sensitive recurrence. Um, there's also another uh, Niraparib study ongoing, single-agent trial for patients who have recurrent ovarian cancer and have received at least three lines of prior chemotherapy. And these are predominantly in patients who do not have an underlying germline mutation. So I think, you know, about a year ago, Patients would come to us and say, well, are, are there PARP inhibitor trials? And we would say no. Um, now there's really a, a real plethora, uh, and it's really important to understand the subtleties in terms of eligibility um, and then the phase. So this, already you see an example of, of, of trial eligibility for patients who have germline BRCA mutations, but also who do not have germline BRCA mutations. Recaparib, we've also talked about, Ariel 2. Um, nice data was presented at the ERTC-NCI meeting uh, by Liz Swisher um, uh, last year. There's a poster on Aerial 2 today. There's going to be an oral presentation on Aerial 2 data, updated data from Liz's presentation uh, on Monday. And that's a phase two trial uh, of, Olaparib, of Rucaparib alone in patients uh, who mostly have non-BRCA, basically trying to find, to define a patient population where this drug will, will be useful if patients do not have an underlying germline BRCA mutation. Aerial 3 is very similar to NOVA. 
Um, and then there's an ongoing phase one trial that's almost done, basically looking at rocaparib in patients with germline uh, BRCA mutations. So in terms of aerial two, um, this is a phase two trial. The primary objective is to pers prospectively identify ovarian cancer patients who are likely to respond to rocaparib. The key eligibility are high-grade serous endometrioid cancer. They have to have platinum sense of disease and no prior PARP inhibitor. This is the dose of rucabrib, standard dose um, derived by the phase one trial, um, 180 patients, and that has now been expanded. Uh, we have aerial to open our institution. There's an extra 200 patients being placed on. And this is from Liz's presentation, and this is gonna be updated on Monday. There's 61% response rate in patients who have germline BRCA mutations. Uh, for patients who are BRCA wild type but have this BRCA-like signature, it's a 32% response rate, so it drops down, but is quite good. And then in patients who do not have a BRCA mutation and also do not have this BRCA-like signature, is an 8% response rate. And this is another area of study, as, as, as Tom and Brad have already alluded to, of trying to define the patient who does not have a germline BRCA mutation but has high-grade serous cancer, and which of those patients will respond to PARP inhibitors. Um, and then lastly, uh, the BioMarin compound. Um, there is a PARP after PARP trial open at the NCI. If it's not open, it's open in the next few weeks. Um, and this is basically using the BioMarin compound just on the heels of receipt and progression through another PARP inhibitor, such as Alaparib, Rucaparib, uh, or Niraparib. And Jung, Jungman Lee is, uh, is running that study. Uh, th these are the trials that are uh, open for newly diagnosed ovarian cancer. So PARP inhibitors are, are entering that field. We have obviously no results of this. Um, SOLO1 has already been discussed. This is again a two to one randomization of either Alaparib versus placebo in patients who have underlying, again, this is a Alaparib trial, so germline BRCA um, uh, mutation and have uh, ovarian cancer. It's, it's all stages. And then Catherine Bell McGuinn on Monday will be presenting the phase one data that's led to this phase three trial um, that's being run through NRG. So the phase three study um, is looking at the incorporation of Viliparib into upfront management of patients with recurrent ovarian cancer. So SOLO1 has completed accrual. Um, we're waiting on results. And the Viliparib trial is now just starting um, and obviously will take, uh, take some time to accrue. Those are the two trials that are, that are uh, at least in play now for newly diagnosed ovarian cancer. Um, our group, uh, Dana-Farber, has been very interested in PARP inhibitor combinations, and I'm gonna go through um, some of the, the trial rationale and some of these results. You've already heard um, about the, uh, the first combination from Tom already, and I'll briefly, uh, briefly mention this. So um, Joyce Liu and I, probably about 2008, while she was still a fellow, were kind of kicking around ideas to put in for a CTEP concept um, and, and noted that Alaparib had activity in ovarian cancer, as did Sidernib. Um, so we put into, uh, into the CTEP pool uh, a combination trial looking at Alaparib and Sidernib. Um, they had, we had some preclinical activity that that, that that might be a good thing to do, but in the last now, seven years, um, more data has been available. And, and these two um, figures on the right are courtesy of Elise Cohn from the, uh, from the NCI, showing preclinical data that if you put the two drugs together, both the PARP inhibitor and the, and the anti-VEGF receptor inhibitor, um, you do get in, uh, decreased cell invasion. Um, and the same is also true for microvascular cell tube uh, organization. Um, so this is the trial as a phase one originally. Um, again, we received stimulus funding uh, from the NCI to do this trial, uh, which then led into a randomized phase two study of sidernibolaparib versus uh, alaparib alone. Um, started uh, uh, back in 2009, it was a 2009 trial, and found that the recommended phase two dose was sidernib 30 milligrams a day and alaparib 200 milligrams a day. Um, and I'll show you in a few minutes that there are going to be a number of trials launched uh, with this combination um, of therapy. Um, this was the initial phase one uh, results, and we were certainly um, uh, very happy uh, to see that the, uh, the waterfall plot was so in favor of, of responses, and this was both in, in the BRCA carriers, but also in, in wild type as well. The overall response rate um, of the sidernibolaparib combination was, was 44%. 
This led then to the phase two design, uh, which again, Tom has mentioned already, had total accrual of 90 patients, was a multi-center phase two trial supported by the NCI, uh, randomized one-to-one, -one. it was not blinded, of a lab rib 400 twice a day versus uh, our uh, recommended phase two dose from the phase one trial, um, and PFS was the primary endpoint. This is all of the patients um, showing a, uh, an improvement in progression-free survival for patients receiving um, sidereal lab rib 17.7 months versus nine months uh, for a lab rib. And then when uh, we broke down and took a look at uh, a retrospective subset analysis uh, for BRCA mutation carriers, uh, really not a huge difference between sidereal lab rib versus lab rib for those patients who were either negative or unknown, um, there was a significant difference uh, in favor of the combination. And again, Tom has shown uh, this data already. So this is now has led to um, uh, several trials that are in different processes of opening, um, either through NRG or uh, ETCTN. Um, so this is the phase two, we call it the biomarker study, uh, CTEP 9825. Um, this will be essentially um, very much like the Clovis trial aerial to looking for a biomarker to try to predict uh, which patients who do not have a germline mutation but have high-grade cancer will respond to this combination. And then there's a phase three study um, run by uh, Joyce Liu and myself looking at the combination versus the lap rib versus platinum doublet in patients with platinum-sensitive recurrent ovarian cancer. Jung Min Lee um, and Angela Sicord will be running a phase two, phase three of this combination in platinum-resistant ovarian cancer. Um, and there's also trials, uh, uh, Ahmed Oza and his group up in Toronto are about to start a, a trial of the combination post alaprib, and he just told me today, post PARP inhibitor uh, progression, so it's not restricted to just alaprib. Um, and ICON-9, um, Jonathan Letterman at the poster discussion ses uh, session this afternoon also mentioned ICON-9, uh, and that will be using uh, alaprib sidernib in patients with platinum-sensitive recurrent ovarian cancer. Um, after receipt of a platinum-based chemotherapy. The um, PAOLA trial uh, 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 also uses a lab rib, but it uses bevacizumab as a VEGF receptor inhibitor, um, or VEGF inhibitor, or VEGF inhibitor, um, as opposed to sidernib, and that is not open yet. But again, the design of that is based upon the sidernib a lab rib uh, results. This is um, just briefly NRG uh, GY004, which is the platinum-sensitive concept. Patients are randomized, either lap rib monotherapy, the combination, or platinum-based chemotherapy um, based upon investigator and patient um, dis uh, discussion. And this has, again, been approved by the NCI GYN steering committee and hopefully will be open by the end of this year. Uh, Nirapirib has also um, uh, has a trial run by um, our Danish colleagues through NGOT, and this will be Nirapirib and or Nirapirib bevacizumab combination against bevacizumab alone. Uh, and this is the Avanova trial uh, that is in the phase one portion right now, but has not yet moved to the phase two, and this will be the phase two design. Um, briefly, in the next minute or so, or two minutes, um, I'll talk about uh, another combination using PARP inhibitors and PI3 kinase pathway inhibitors. Um, these are the different trials that have either been reported out um, or ongoing. So our group uh, in, uh, with Stand Up to Cancer support has looked at either BCAM120 or BYL719, both of which are oral PI3 kinase inhibitors, um, in combination with Alaprib. Uh, Tim Yap, also at the same session, I presented at ACR is using the AKT inhibitor, AZD5363, uh, with the lap rib, and there's an ongoing or about to open trial at MD Anderson looking at the uh, AZD5363 uh, uh, or 2014, which is TORC12 in combination with, uh, with a lap rib. And there's good justification uh, for doing this, certainly for the um, Cancer Genome Atlas project, has shown that about 50% of uh, high-grade serous ovarian cancers uh, harbor defects in DNA repair, but also about 50% have signaling pathway problems with PI3 kinase and RAS. My colleague next door at the Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital, Gerber Wolf, has done extensive data in addition to Jose Bezelga um, showing preclinical 
uh, in vivo synergy of BKM120 uh, and Elaprib. Uh, the combination uh, arm are these, uh, whereas the uh, yellow and green uh, represent single agent alone. So I won't go into this because I'm, I'm over time already, but uh, this was data that I presented at ACR of BKM120 and Elaprib showing DLT toxicities of transaminitis and also depression. BKM120 is a, parpen, or is a uh, uh, PI3 kinase inhibitor that actually crosses the blood-brain barrier. But this is the, the waterfall plot uh, that we've seen. This was a trial of both in ovarian cancer as well as breast cancer showing uh, activity of this combination and also showing uh, uh, durations of response um, in some patients that exceeded uh, uh, one year. The other um, combination of PARP inhibitors are with other DNA repair inhibitors. And there is a, an ongoing study of Elaprib plus AZD6738, which is an ATR inhibitor. And certainly uh, combining PARP inhibitors with other molecules that inhibit other uh, aspects of DNA repair certainly, um, I think, are very uh, potentially exciting. So future combinations, uh, PARP inhibitors combined with, we've talked about a number of different ones, but also uh, HSP90 inhibitors, other DNA repair inhibitors, such as ATR inhibitors, and obviously what most of this meeting has been about have been the immune checkpoint blockade inhibitors. Certainly there's been um, interest in combining these agents with PARP inhibitors given potential synergy. The advantages of combination therapy are to avoid the myelosuppression that has been seen in PARP inhibitor uh, chemotherapy combinations. They're mostly by mouth regimens. Um, this is where we can really start to personalize therapy for our patients uh, and also mitigate uh, and understand resistance strategies. Disadvantages include overlapping toxicities, um, understanding how basically to hit the target and how do we measure that appropriately and quantify this, and then potential drug-drug interactions. Um, well, also, part of my talk was to talk about characteristics of good candidates for clinical trials. I think we've talked about that already. Obviously, you have to meet eligibility and exclusion criteria. You need a patient who's willing to go on trials, got a good PS, normal Orwin function, not been heavily pretreated, although there are trials that I've discussed tonight um, where there's no line limit, uh, especially on phase one trials, and certainly someone who's not going to be burdened financially or psychologically by the trial. Um, additional considerations that Patients need to have measurable cancer, usually by resist 1.1. Um, and again, making sure that that trial is an appropriate next step in her therapy um, and that it makes sense clinically. These are how to refer patients. Clinicaltrials.gov is a great resource to find trials. NRG website, hospital websites, cancer.gov, centerwatch.com. Um, and certainly having um, connections with academic centers um, to quiz uh, physicians and their research study teams about open trials. There's a summary and key points. Um, there are a multitude of current ongoing PARP inhibitor trials. It's, these are really, I think, one of the most exciting uh, therapies in ovarian cancer. We talked about selecting correct patients, and then once selected, um, what's important to enrolling these patients. So I am going to stop right there. Thank you. Thank you very much.